Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial I will show you how to make the cold brew sweater. I had so many requests for this uh, tutorial and I uh, had to uh, remake the front panel of the sweater because this one is the most uh, important part of the sweater. Once you have done the front panel then the other uh, part sleeves and uh, back panel are easier to make so the entire tutorial will be almost for the front panel and then I will uh, give you the stitch count and the numbers for the back and sleeves as well and showing you the um, uh, assembling part and the ribbing at the neckline because I had a lot of requests on how to do the math on the front panel and how to calculate the rows and the short rows because this uh, will be a technique that we will be using I will explain you that in um, into the next frame so for the purpose of this tutorial I will use a thinner yarn and a smaller crochet hook because I didn't have the same yarn weight and then I thought that maybe I would make a sweater for my daughter but I'm, I uh, was following the same tutorial and pattern for the small size in the original uh, tutorial and you can find a written pattern on my website I'm using uh, I use a uh, medium weight yarn I think and uh, a 8 millimeter crochet hook and in this tutorial you'll see me using this uh, DK weight yarn or sport yarn and a 5 millimeter crochet hook but again it's the same uh, pattern as for size small and I will explain a bit how to calculate the number of rows, what you need to do, what you need, how to divide the number of short rows, uh, long rows, and how to have everything in case you want to use a different weight yarn or you're not, uh, your ga gauge is not matching mine. So um, I will bring the uh, sketch the diagram that I had because I divided the front panel into sections to be easier to understand uh, how we're working when we are doing the short rows when we are doing the long rows and I think this will help you to have an entire um, to see how this section are worked together and uh, it's really important to know uh, the measurements that you want to reach for the front panel or the sweater and to know your gauge so before starting everything it's important to make a gauge swatch and know how many rows and how many stitches do you have in a 10 uh, centimeters or 4 inches square and then um, going from that you'll be able to calculate how many rows you will need for the entire sweater so uh, uh, this will be the materials that I will use for this sample but in the description box below you can find all the materials that I use for the original sweater and also you can check the link with a written pattern that it's available in uh, multiple sizes so this is the diagram of the front panel you see that I divided here into sections and uh, like I said before starting everything make a gauge swatch and see how many rows and stitches you'll need to get to the desired width and length because we are working into vertical rows the number of rows will give you the um, width and the number of stitches the length so the easiest way is to calculate the length first because this is not where we are working too much on and then calculate how many rows you'll need to get to that width the width of the sweater of the front panel needs to be the width of uh, your bust so or the most prominent part of your uh, of your body and of course you need to add a positive is to this 
according uh, with how you like your sweater to fit if you want an oversized fit or a closer fit once you have the um, width that you wish for your sweater for your front panel and of course the sweater itself so let's just say that we will have for the boost width we will need uh, 55 centimeters I don't know exactly if this is the number from the pattern but just to let you to give you an example so now that we have uh, this width so let's just write it down so 55 centimeters then you'll need to transform that into rows so knowing that we have um, how many rows we have in 10 centimeters then you calculate how many rows you will need in 55 centimeters once you have the total number of rows that you need for the front panel and you'll need to adjust that because you need uh, an even number of rows for that you'll divide it in half because the front panel and these sections over here are basically uh, so the, the second part of the front panel is basically worked in the mirror so you will need the same number of rows for the second part of the sweater so let's just divide this like this and now you have the number of rows for half of the front panel which needs to be an uneven number of rows I think I had 33 rows because I have 66 in total this is the right number from the from the pattern so I have 33 rows for half of the sweater but doesn't matter if you want to work with uh, different uh, weight yarn it's important to have an uneven number of stitches and then you need to divide the total number of rows so the 33 in my case into this section that you will need to work so first section I had six 12 section, 9 section, 4, 3, 12, 4, 4, and again 6. <coughs> First and the last section doesn't need to be, <coughs> sorry, doesn't need to be with the same number of rows. It's just, uh, in my case, it was like that, but can be with different number of rows. It doesn't matter. You can start with more rows for the first section and have less rows for the last one. It doesn't matter. Section 2 and section 4, you don't need to count it twice. It's basically the same rows only that it's work in two different section because we're working with short rows but you don't need to count like 6 12 9 again plus 12 plus 6 you need to count 6 12 9 6 that's it okay so uh, because the uh, second section and the fourth section is basically the same so both of them gives you an entire row an entire section an entire length so now the total number of rows you can divide it by three because you have three section over here so first second and four which is one single uh, second and four and then um, three and four uh, one two three and four but because first one and last one is the same with the same number of rows let's uh, just say that you leave it like that you can divide the number of rows by three and then adjust because uh, divide one into two and have the first and uh, the last one then uh, the second and the fourth one which will be one of the um, third part and then the third section Pay attention that first, second, four, and um, last section needs to be with an even number of rows, but the third section needs to be with an uneven number of rows because you need to end this section in the opposite direction to be able to start the section number four. So this is not really important how you divide it and how many rows you have. I give you this proportion of um, divided by three. So I have 33 rows and I just uh, divided by three. It means 11, 11 rows. I needed an even number of rows for section two 
4 and both section uh, 1 and uh, 5 so I just uh, made it 12 and then what I had left I just let it for the third part so I had 12 so this was my second and my fourth um, section then I had it 12 divided by 2 which was 6 and was the first and the last and what I had left from the 33 minus um, 24 9 rows I let it for the uh, third part now with the number of stitches for the short rows that you will need to start with I just uh, started at half so the first row of uh, second part was 25 because I had 50 rows in total so you need to start at half and then with each short rows the short rows are working are work two by two so always the turning row you, you won't do anything with it you will just work it like uh, with the stitches that you have so if you need to increase or decrease for short rows you will al always do it on the um, forward row so if you start at the half then you will uh, make the short rows shorter with two stitches always will be with two stitches you can start lower so now at the half but pay attention with how many stitches uh, you will need to decrease for the short rows because otherwise you need to have enough stitches to finish the section so I cannot start with uh, 10 stitches from the 10 stitches because I need to decrease with 10 stitches which means that I won't have enough stitches to finish this uh, this part uh, because on the bigger sizes I had more stitches to play with I started even um, um, with more stitches than the half so um, you can see and maybe make a draw and see where the um, uh, these shapes of the of the sections will look if you want to be um, upper or down then you will have to play with it then the second half will be worked in the mirror so you will have the same number of rows uh, to work there only that being in the mirror this means that maybe you will start with the short rows differently like uh, you can see with section 2 which is the same as section 8 you will start with the um, uh, shorter side of the section not with the longest uh, one as you will be doing into the section 2 so I hope that I didn't um, confuse you too much about it we will now start to work uh, on the front panel using the small size um, numbers that you can find in the pattern also in the written pattern that you can find in my shops you will find also um, um, charts with uh, all the stitches uh, and how the rows uh, and uh, sections are work with how many so we will start with uh, 57 stitches 6 stitches is the uh, bottom ribbing of the sweater so in case you want this one to be wider or thicker then you will have to start with more stitches so the main front, front panel has uh, 50 stitches and you will add the number of stitches that you want for the ribbing so now the first 6 stitches which is the ribbing I will work slip stitches and now for the rest of the stitches I will work double slip stitches or half double crochet slip stitch so yarn over insert the hook into the stitch pull out a loop and then pass that loop through both loops that you have on your hook so this will be the main stitch pattern that we will work with so slip stitches for the ribbing and uh, double slip stitch or half double crochet slip stitch for the rest of the stitches so this was the first row and we will start now the second row the first stitch or the edge stitches I'm always working them into the both loops but for the rest of the stitches we will work only into the back loop so now double slip stitches into the back loop only 
until you have six stitches left and into the last slip stitches last <laughs> stitches you will work slip stitches but again uh, the last stitch will be into both loops but the other five will be into the back loop only so if I'm not uh, saying it at every row that the sorry that the last stitch or the first stitch will be into the both loops you'll get it because this is how I'm working always working the edge stitches because I uh, I uh, like the edge better in this way and this was uh, row number two if you want to find it easier to count the rows it's uh, a good idea to use stitch markers at every two rows always also I recommend because maybe you will not work the entire front panel in one day or something to stop when you finished one section because it will be easier to just follow the pattern for from the next section that you will need to work so now starting with row 3 we will do um, same that so working the ribbing first with slip stitches and then with half double crochet uh, slip stitches into the rest and we will repeat that until we will have six rows so these are the numbers number of rows that we need to work for the first section Okay, so I finished the first section. Now we're starting with section number two, which is with uh, short rows. So we will start with the ribbing. So those six slip stitches that we need to make at the beginning of the row. And then we will work 25 double slip stitches. Okay, I told you that I was going with uh, to the half. So this is my half, 25. So this will be the first row and is the first short row, which will be the longest one. So we will need to decrease with the other rows. and we will do those decreases uh, at every uneven number of rows so always the turning row we are not doing anything with it so we're just working the stitches as they are so now we're turning and working the turning row with double slip stitches or half double crochet slip stitches until we have six stitches left and the last six stitches we will work slip stitches regular slip stitches <laughs> I don't know how to call them to make that uh, ribbing at the bottom of the sweater So section number two will have 12 rows in total and we will decrease on the um, uneven uh, row or the right side rows if you want to have it like that but you will see that with the other section the uneven number of row might be the wrong side row because we will switch at some point. So now let's just finish this uh, second row. And now 
we turn and we need to make a short row now so we will work this row number three with two stitches less so we will have to finish this uh, third row into the third stitch from the edge from the end of the row happened <laughs> okay so I finished the row with two stitches before and now I'm working the turning row and we will work on the turning row the stitches as they are and this is row number four we need to pay attention with the row numbers because we need to um, work the exact number of rows that we established at the beginning for the each section. So now we will repeat this and go with two stitches less until we will have 12 rows in total. So the last decrease, the last short row basically will be row uh, 11 and row 12 will be just the turning row. Okay, so now the second section is done and we're about to start the third section which will be with com a complete row so we need to work an entire row but let's see how we will pass the short rows because we don't want to increase the number of stitches and also we want to our work to be as neat as possible so let's just work the stitches until we will finish the stitches uh, of the section number two you need to have 15 stitches there without counting the uh, ribbing edge or the ribbing And so now I am on the last row, last stitch, so we will need to go right into the next two stitches. And because I'm a bit higher, yeah, so I will go with the uh, hook into the side row and then into the next stitch that I need to work. And I will work those stitches together. The next stitch will be a regular stitch and you can do it through both loops if you want so now again I'm a bit higher so I will go with the hook into the side row I'm trying to go into the middle not to be too high or too low and then into the next stitch that I need to work in and then the next stitch and this is how we will pass over these short rows with these uh, stitches work together I'm not going from that high position where I am with the yarn and the hook and going too low and having my work I don't know curling or having um, spaces or holes so this is how we will do every time we need to pass over the short row so this will be the de technique that we will be using when passing over the short rows now with the last one okay and going into the next and from over here I just continue and working the stitches as they are until the end of the row at the end of this row you will need to have the same number of stitches as you started with so in total 56 stitches in our case 6 stitches is the ribbing at the beginning and six, uh, 50 stitches for the main front panel 
and this section number th three will have an uneven number of rows. We need to end up this section uh, into the opposite side, so at the neckline or shoulder in, the, in our case. So we will work in total nine rows. So this will be the first row and we will need to work eight more rows to complete this section. Okay, so this is how it's looking after first row. And now we will continue to work in our stitch pattern eight more rows to complete section number three. Okay, we finished section number three and we have now uh, section number four, which is also with short rows. Section number four starts at the shoulder and it's a bit tricky because we will need to shape the neckline also. So now we will start with 15 stitches this time we will increase so we'll start with the shortest row and we will get to the longest one so first work 15 stitches Okay, let's see how many stitches do you, we have. So now that we have 15 stitches, we chain one and turn and working the turning row. We will work all the stitches as they are until the end of the row and on the row number three we will start to increase with two stitches at the end of the row. Okay, so we will work all the stitches up to the end and then I will show you how to work the two stitches. So we need to go into the section number three with two more stitches and we're doing it like when we pass over the short rows with that two stitches together and the second one. Now chain one and turn and we will work the row number four, which is a turning row, so working the stitches as they are. Okay, on the fifth row we will go again with two stitches more 
like we did on the row 3 Okay, so now let's just do two more stitches. And then we will turn on row 6 and we will start to decrease for the neckline. So we will finish this row 6 with two stitches before. So don't work into the last two stitches and we will make three decreases on uh, row number 6, 8 and 10. Okay, so I'm finishing the row without working into the last two stitches. Row number seven, we will go with two stitches uh, to work with two more stitches. And this will happen on the, uh, this on row seven, also on row nine, and also on row eleven. Okay, so let's just go with the two extra stitches. I just need to rejoin another e e ball of yarn. Okay, so now turn and uh, finish row 8 with two stitches before because we are still decreasing for the neckline. So this will be the last stitch and we will leave the last two without working in it. Now row 9, again we will work two extra stitches at the end of the row. Okay, so now the two extra stitches and then we will uh, turn to work the row 10 which will be the last row to decrease for the neckline and after row 10 we will have two more row rows to work on this section. So 
So we will finish this row 10 also with 2 stitches before the end of the row. And now turn work the row 11 also working those two extra stitches at the end of the row and then turn with row 12 but up to the end of the row without decreasing at the end of the row 12. Okay, so now this uh, side, this section is finished and we need to work now the row entirely. So we will have a long row. We will pass here after finishing the stitches for the section number 4. We will pass to the next stitch the same as we are doing when we are passing over the short rows and then we will continue working the rest of the stitches until the end of the row but uh, remember that at the end of the row you will have uh, those six stitches for the ribbing which needs to be worked into slip stitch pattern and we will continue with 12 rows for this section Okay, so we finished and now we need to work uh, the section number 6 which will be the section number 4 but in the mirror. So we will start with 19 stitches. This uh, is the longest row but because we decrease for the neckline with the 6 stitches, with 6 stitches we have 19 stitches instead of 25. and on this section we will need also to increase for the neckline to finish the neckline. So let's just work those 19 stitches for the first row. And now we will turn and at the end of row 2 we will need to increase with 2 stitches to continue and finish shaping the neckline. And we will do a foundation half double crochet to make those uh, increases and I will show you right away how we will work those stitches. So to make the first foundation half double crochet because we need to increase now with two stitches we insert the hook into the side row pull out a loop yarn over and pull it through only the first loop and then yarn over and pass it through all three loops on your hook and when making the second one you need to insert the hook in the bottom of that first foundation half double crochet and repeat the same steps and now we have those two stitches that we need extra for the neckline we're turning now and we're starting with the shortening the rows so we will end up this row with two stitches before so this is the row number three we will have 12 rows for this section
Okay, so we will let the last two stitches like they are and turning our row before them. Now we will need to increase again at the end of row number four to increase again with two stitches. So we will be doing the two foundation half double crochet at the end of the row. Okay, and now we will turn and again work the row shorter with two stitches. This is row number five. And now we will turn and work the row number six and row number six will be the last one to increase with those two stitches. So at the end of the row we will add two foundation half double crochet. then we will turn and we will start working on row number seven and again working with two stitches uh, less so ending the row before the last two stitches and we will repeat until having 12 rows in total now at the neckline we don't need to increase anymore so we will stop the row and the row as it is. Only the uneven number of rows need to be uh, finished with two stitches before the end of the row. And we will do that up to row 12. So here we will finish the row and we don't need to increase anymore so just turn 
and we will continue working with two stitches less on uh, every uneven number of rows until we complete the section and have 12 rows. Okay, so the section number 6 is done. Now we will start working on the section number 7, which is similar with section number 3. So we need to work an entire row with all the stitches and we need to pass over the short rows that we just did at uh, section 6. So when passing over the short rows, we will keep doing the same technique with those uh, two stitches together. One of the stitches uh, made into the side row. And for this section, because I said that it's uh, the same as the section number 3, we will work 9 rows in total. And we need to finish the section at the uh, bottom ribbing. Again, at the end of this row, you will need to have the same number of stitches that you start with. So we will have 50 stitches and 6 stitches for the bottom ribbing. So in total, 56 stitches. Okay, so I finished the first row. Now we will continue to work eight more rows to complete the section number seven. This is the end of the section number seven and we will start the section number eight which is the section number two in mirror. So now we will start with the ribbing stitches, so those six slip stitches at the beginning. And then we will work 15 stitches because we now start with the shortest row from this section. So we will work 15 stitches and we will need to increase with 2 stitches with each uneven row. And uh, we will we'll need to work those two extra stitches into the section number 7. Sorry. But now let's just finish. We will start only with row number 3 to work those uh, two extra stitches. Again, this section will have 12 rows, same as section number 6, same as sec section number 4 and section number 2.
Okay, so now we will start working on the row number 3 and we will go with 2 stitches further into the section number 7. And we will pass that also using those 2 stitches together, one of them into the side row or side of the stitch or into the middle just to be closer to the stitch where you need to work in. Okay, so now I will do two stitches extra, first one and the second one. And we will turn and work in the turning row and we will have to repeat these two rows until we will have 12 rows in total for this section. Okay, so now we will just um, start going with two stitches farther and this is the section number 8 and we have only one more section to work which is the reverse uh, section number 1 so we need to go with uh, working an entire row and for six rows. So we have only six more rows to work. Again, when uh, passing from the section number eight stitches to the section number seven stitches to continue working our row, we will do this using the same method with those two stitches together. And believe it or not, after these six rows, we will finish the front panel. Okay, so I pass over the section number 8 and now I will continue working the stitches until the end of the row. And starting with row number 2, we will work the stitches as they are into the well-known stitch pattern with double slip stitches into the back loop only and slip stitches into the back loop only for the... Um, bottom ribbing or the hem and we will continue until we will have six stitches uh, six rows in total And I was telling at the beginning of this tutorial that's that the main tutorial is for the front uh, panel. We won't work together the back panel and the sleeves because after working this front panel I think uh, those will be super easy to make because we don't have any short rows and we will have to work only into the a double slip stitch and of course slip stitch for the ribbing uh, if you want so the back panel will be with the same number of stitches starting with the same number of stitches and working 66 rows because this is the total number of rows that we worked for the front, front panel as well and um, if you want the ribbing to be uh, wider, you can uh, start with more rows and work more stitches into the slip stitch. So, 
these are the number for the back panel and for the sleeves so you will need to start the back panel with the same number of stitches work the first row into the slip stitches for the ribbing which are six stitches or more if you want to work uh, the ribbing even wider but you will need to add those extra stitches to those 57 then the turning row will be with uh, double slip stitches into the back loop only and slip stitches into the back loop only and you will need to repeat these uh, rows until you'll have 66 rows in total is the total number of rows that we worked for the front panel as well then for the sleeves uh, if you want to adjust the length you can uh, simply uh, join the shoulders the back and front panel at uh, the shoulders and then see where the shoulder is dropping into your sleeve length or arm length and then measure from there to the cuff uh, I started with 44 stitches working the ribbing as well with uh, with six stitches the slip stitch ribbing and then the rest of the stitches 38 stitches were into the double slip stitch and work in total 46 rows if you want to decrease on the sleeves which I didn't do but I can tell you how to do it you can do it with short rows as well so those uh, going with uh, two stitches uh, short longer because you will need to go from less to more and then uh, uh, you will need to do as many short rows as you want to decrease and have at the cuff so I had 46 rows if you want to uh, have 40 rows at the cuff then you will need to make six short rows and after finishing all these uh, four uh, panels you will need to go and assemble them uh, we will use uh, I'm using usually you won't see that in the tutorial into the next tutorial but I'm using the mattress stitch to make the uh, seams and uh, I'm starting with the shoulders so first lay the shoulders the back and front panel one next to the other make sure that the rows align and uh, sew the shoulders so the so the shoulders stitch the shoulders then place the sleeve right with the middle row next to the shoulder seam and uh, uh, stitch the sleeve and then you'll fold it into half and then uh, working and stitch the sides so this is what I um, I managed to film when working on the actual sweater now we will working work the neckline ribbing I'm using the same 8 millimeter crochet hook for the setup row which will be one row around or one round in uh, single crochet stitches and I will work one single crochet into each side row again I uh, was using an 8 millimeter crochet hook and uh, yarn size number 4 for this sweater so but you can find all the details into the description box below after finishing this round in a single crochet stitches we will slip stitch into the first single crochet and we will start working on the ribbing and I will switch with a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook because the neckline was a bit too wide or wider and I wanted to make it smaller a bit uh, so I used a smaller crochet hook to make this uh, ribbing slip stitch ribbing even tighter around my neck so chain seven and starting with the second stitch work slip stitches then when getting at the end of these uh, stitches you'll go with one slip stitch into the next two stitches of the neckline then turn and we will work slip stitch into the back loop only 
up to the end of the row and you already know that the edge stitches I like to work them through both loops and this time I chose not to um, chain when turning so I'm not making any turning chain exactly for not to create those extra loops and make the neckline tighter but you need to put your yarn in the back like this because it will be easier to go with your hook right into the first stitch and after we will go around and after finishing the entire neckline we will join the ends with two sli slip stitches as well and um, basically after finishing the neckline the sweater is done you can wave in uh, those ends if you have some and then uh, just uh, block the sweater to according to the measurements and basically this was it I really hope that this tutorial will help I just focused on the front um, panel because this was uh, the one that um, was with short rows and it was a bit more difficult and I didn't uh, film the back panel and just leaves because we already worked the same num the same rows into the front panel so I think it's pretty clear how to work them so thanks for watching and I can wait to share with you some other tutorials so see you next time bye bye